All right. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for attending today. Um, I want to thank the United States Capitol Historical Society for setting this up. I've got a chat box running in case you happen to have any questions uh, on anything that is going on, or we will try and address them as we get to the end. I know that you're all busy, so I do truly appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to meet with us today. My name is Gavin McElvena. I'm the president of the Society of the Honor Guard, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and we are leading the efforts when it comes to the centennial of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier from the nonprofit side of it. So this briefing will go over some of the ways that you can get involved, your staff can get involved as well as your communities. And uh, anyone that wishes to have the briefing slides, just um, shoot me an email. I will add my uh, contact information in the bottom of this. If I can type correctly. President at tombguard.org. And because I'm on the West Coast, I am still drinking my coffee this morning. So I apologize. I know you're busy. So let's jump on into this. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And we'll start a slideshow and kind of go through this. All right. So again, um, I am the president of the Society of the Honor Guard, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And we're going to talk about some very brief things leading up to the centennial. We're going to find out what the centennial is, how the National Defense Authorization Act of 2017 directs from Congress down to the Department of Defense on what needs to be done for this national commemoration. We'll talk briefly about some of the different projects in which you can get involved with, and obviously some links to find more information in case you have questions. The centennial of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is a national commemoration. Uh, focusing on the 100th anniversary of the burial of the World War I unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. Now, back in 1921, Congressman Hamilton Fish of New York proposed the original legislation. It was never intended to be about just World War I. It was intended to be about all conflicts and provide a location for all veterans and all Gold Star families to come to in case their loved one had not been returned from that conflict. It's to span more than one conflict. And as we've seen monuments in Washington, D.C. and other locations lose their relevancy over the years as the combatants or the families of the combatants have, have passed on, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers one that is the opposite of that. It has increased in relevancy. It is still a location that it doesn't matter what conflict has occurred in our nation. It is a focal point. It is the heart of Arlington National Cemetery and a focal point for those of us to come and mourn, to honor the service and sacrifice of so many. So when the NDAA came down and said, <clears throat> Congress has, has said that the Pentagon will do X, we looked at it as not focusing on just World War I, but what the entire Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and each of the unknown soldiers that are buried in the plaza represent. This was not meant to be DC centric. It is meant to incorporate all of the United States as well as our allies. And we'll go through that here shortly. Some of the specific things, <clears throat> excuse me, that the NDA 2017 directives is what Congress told the Department of Defense that they shall coordinate support and facilitate a program for this national commemoration. With those, it has to include activities, ceremonies, as well as education. It should be honoring America's commitment to never forget the service and sacrifice of so many for our nation. It should highlight each of the services, not just one, but each of the services in times of war or armed conflict. Highlight the contr contributions of civilians, governmental, non-governmental organizations, and hopefully we can start to educate and honor within our communities. This is an opportunity for all of us to take and say, we are proud to be Americans. And this is one of those aspects that we can come together regardless of our status, regardless of our race, our politics, our religion, or whatever hashtag you wanna to add to somebody in this day and age where we can be one nation and be proud to be an American. 
the NDA went on to just to talk about paying tribute to not only our nation, but as well as those on the home front who had to go through the wars, whether they're in 1921, 1958, or, or 1953, or even beyond. We want to find a way to we can educate America about service and sacrifice and talk about the history of the unknown soldiers as a group, not just one war. At the same time, we have to be able to recognize the contributions and sacrifice made by all of our allies during our conflicts. And this is important because as we go into October of this year, there will be things that are going on in France where we're bringing in our allies that are important to especially World War I. So quickly, <clears throat> how do you get involved? There are many different projects or programs and opportunities at the city and higher level for people to consider getting involved with. And I'm gonna hit some of the highlights. The picture that you see there is one of the projects that we have underway right now where a flag, a, um, a casket flag is being flown at key locations that follows the history of the World War I owned and soldier, starting in Arlington, going through the uh, USS Olympia at the Independent Seaport Museum in Philadelphia, over to France at all of the cemeteries where the unknown soldiers candidates were selected, as well as the final selections in Chalon and Champagne, and then finally back to the United States at the US Capitol and the uh, ending at Arlington. Something that is simple to get involved with and is already process has already been started is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Centennial Commemorative Coin Act. Both of the House and Senate bill texts are there in the hyperlinks. Um, and if you can get your congressional leaders to support those, then that project will get kicked off because I know it has been stalled for a few years. Obviously, we've been through a lot of different things over the past four or five years. And this is just one simple way that your bosses can get involved um, and support the centennial of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Um, again, if you need those links, I can add those to those later or just send you this briefing. The other way you can do this is something called a Never Forget card. And this can be done locally at your home state. This can be done around the grounds of the US Capitol or even in the White House Rose Garden. But this gives you an opportunity to directly engage with your community. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Never Forget Garden is a very simple way to bring a community together provide a place, a safe spot, a place to remember, reflect, and honor all of those who have served and sacrificed. So we are seeing these in over 100 and I think it's 14 or 15 communities across the United States. Some of these are already planned in France as well, but all it's doing is providing a place for maybe those who aren't so involved with the military, yet still have ties somehow to the military where they've lost someone or someone within their family has served and sacrificed, or a community as whole wants to provide an, a, a safe location to honor and remember those who have served and sacrificed. It's as simple as creating a garden or rededicating a garden to that location, providing that opportunity to um, do those things. We're working hand in hand with the American Rose Society and Carith Studios to present this type of a project. Another simple way that you can get involved with is by getting back into your local communities and connecting with your veteran service organizations, your gold star families, or just the communities in general to create a national salute on November 11th at 11 o'clock. This is something that we have seen uh, on Armistice Day in other nations, and they do it quite well. But here in the United States, November 11th doesn't always stand up to why we're having to do this. It's just a day off for a lot of people. <clears throat> and this is our opportunity to remind them of service and sacrifice. It can be a simple program where you stand around a flagpole, you ring bells 21 times, or if you're lucky enough to be able to have a firing party or cannon or something along those lines, but you ring bells 21 times, which is our nation's highest salute um, that they can provide a fallen service member you take a moment to pause to remember and reflect upon those who have already served and those that will serve and sacrifice in our future to make our nation what it is. And then of course, playing of taps is always appropriate at the end of a ceremony. That is simple. 
That is a simple national salute that can happen on November 11th. And your communities, your states, however you wish to define it, can easily do something like this, bringing everyone together. Again, that inclusiveness. It doesn't matter what our race, our color, our, our religion, our politics are. At that one moment, we can pause and remember all that have served and sacrificed on November 11th. This is a simple program to get involved with. The other way that I would like to ask for your support is um, something called, why is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier important to you or the nation? And, and, and have that recorded and sent to us so that we can include it into what we call a centennial tidbit. The video that is playing right now, and I apologize, it's not gonna have any sound to it, <clears throat> but we've had about a dozen people send in uh, videos answering that question of why the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is so important. And coming from the individual level, whether they served in the military or not, all the way up to our leaders of the nation, this is how they provide those answers and make it relevant to their individual communities. To date, we've had members of the Congress and Senate provide those videos to us. We've had actors and directors. We've had authors as well as Medal of Honor recipients. So this is something very simple. It takes a couple minutes to record a video on your thoughts or someone's thoughts on why is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier important to you or why is the Tomb of the Un Unknown Soldier important to our nation. It's important to remember that during the centennial, we're not focusing on just one conflict, but why the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is there and what it means to our nation, especially our Gold Star families and veterans, knowing that they can come to that location, they can remember the sacrifices of their loved ones and have a place to honor and remember them, even if they've not been returned to the United States. Another simple way to get involved is that the society itself conducts free educational presentations uh, across the United States. Um, <clears throat> as long as we can find a tomb guard that served at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, talk about the history of the Unknown Soldiers, talk about what the Sentinels go through to provide this continual vigil and honor. All you have to do is set this up, provide an area for your constituents or your um, community to come to, and we will come and talk about these things and help educate our nation on the importance of the tomb itself and, and in more of ways than just simply watching a video of a wreath ceremony on a specific day. I think the more that people understand the process behind our nation's efforts to set up an unknown soldier, which represents all of the fallen from those certain conflicts and why it's important is something that is being missed in our educational process in the United States today. This is as simple as setting it up, uh, contacting us, and, and we will make it happen from there. <clears throat> the other simple way that you, you have the power to do today is set up proclamations, whether it's at the city level, state, or even national level. Proclamations um, are a great way to involve the community and talk about how you will set aside a specific day to honor a specific thing. And in this case, November 11th being the National Salute Day in honor of the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. It is simple for you to create. You guys know it better than I do. But it is, again, one of those um, easy, uh, low-hanging fruit type of things that gets you and your community involved. The other simple ways is if you happen to have the opportunity or free day um, where you can attend one of the planned services, whether they are at the national level or a international level, um, that lends the weight and support of our government to these important commemorations. We've had a lot of them already started. Um, some of the pictures you see here are not only in France, but aboard the USS Olympia in Philadelphia. And as I go through this, we want you to find a way to stand with us over some of the different ceremonies that we already have on the list but there's obviously a lot more um, than the key ones I've put up here. On September 4th, the society is going to go out to the Chief Plenty Coup State Park in Montana. We're going to work with the Crow Indian Nation um, and honor Chief Plenty Coup and his um, contributions to the events that happened on November 11th, 1921. 
if for those of you that don't know, but Chief Plenty Ku represented all of the Native American nations during that time frame and placed his coup stick and war bonnet upon the grave of the unknown soldier from World War I. Both of those items are still on display at the display room in Arlington National Cemetery. In September, we're going to take that flag that I mentioned in the very beginning of this, and we're gonna fly it aboard the USS Olympia, which is the actual start of their mission to go over to France and bring home the World War I unknown soldier. On November 9th, not the 8th, I apologize, that's my mistake on there, on the November 9th at the National Museum of the Navy at the Navy Yard, there will be a seminar to talk about the Navy's contribution because most people don't understand that the Navy represented our nation when they brought home the unknown soldiers from each of those conflicts, whether it was 1921, 1958, or even in 1984, the Navy always brings home our unknown soldier. On November 9th through 10th, Arlington National Cemetery took one of our proposals and they will be holding a flower ceremony that will be open to the entire public. And this will allow them to recreate what was seen when every unknown soldier came home. Most of the time when they arrived, they went right to the United States Capitol where they lay in state for the public as well as dignitaries to pay their respects. We proposed to Arlington National Cemetery that on this day, 9th and the 10th, which is historically accurate to the 1921 period, that instead of going to the Capitol, Arlington would open up the chains where the tomb guards stand the watch, allowing the public to come on and place a flower at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Much like they did when they went through the Capitol as they lay in state, this will be a very personal opportunity for members of your community, as well as our leaders to pay their individual respects to the unknown soldiers. Obviously on November 11th, there will be the normal National Veterans Day observance. And I know that Arlington took one of the proposals that we presented to have some sort of a procession that the president, as he enters Arlington National Cemetery, will process up to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And that will reflect the, the years and generations of warriors that have served our nation from 1921 through today. Backing up a little bit, there are events that are going on in France. And your leaders can represent your individual states or our nation by attending those. On October 19th, we'll be in Paris and we'll dedicate a never forget garden at the American Cathedral. Now, for those that don't know it, the American Cathedral is one of the first places that built a memorial after the Great War to honor and remember all that sacrificed during that conflict. On October 24th, we will be in Chalon en Champagne to mark the 100th anniversary of the selection of the unknown soldier by Sergeant Edward F. Younger of the United States Army. It is on this day that our unknown soldier was selected and started his process to come home. On October 25th, we will be in the port town of Louave, where we will mark the 100th anniversary of the departure from France of our unknown soldier. And I can tell you that both of those locations, the French people are coming out and supporting our nation. And again, remembering and honoring those that served and sacrificed so that they may have the nation that they do today. So we ask you to find somewhere on any one of the events that we have listed on our website to represent our nation, to represent those communities that you serve and to honor the centennial of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. How can you find more information is pretty simple. Obviously our website, uh, Arlington National Cemetery is the government's lead agent for the national commemorations and they have specific events that are going on inside the cemetery as well as a very strong and powerful educational platform. You can click on their website and go there. The Independent Seaport Museum in Philadelphia where the USS Olympia is still docked today um, has a program that is focusing on the centennial. And of course the American Rose Society which is helping us with the Never Forget Garden has a lot of information on how you can bring that into your community because of course knowledge is power and that's what we're trying to push out to everybody today. My points of contact, um, obviously president at tombguard.org is my email. Don't uh, hesitate to send me something if you have any type of questions. And um, I know I breezed through this really quickly 
I see that Jane Campbell of the United States uh, Capital Historical Society is on. So I would like to maybe kick it over to you, Jane, in case you have something to uh, say and I'll stop sharing at this point. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, we really so appreciate the, the partnership that you have put together with the Tomb Guard Society and the United States Capitol Historical Society. What not everybody knows is that the society has a very special relationship with the Tomb Guards. If you notice our logo, uh, the identification is Fred Schwengel. Uh, Fred Schwengel is the founder of our uh, organization. He was a member of the United States Congress. And his son-in-law, uh, Neil, Lloyd Neal Cosby, who I believe his wife is on listening to us, uh, was an Army and Vietnam veteran who served as the platoon leader of the Guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And so we know from the Cosby family how precious the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is to the American people. And we are doing this not only because we honor the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, but also because we honor Neil Cosby, uh, who is one of our own, active in the so Society of the Honor Guard Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Uh, and one of the proudest things he ever did was participate in that event. And we also want to remember that the United States Congress played a role in establishing the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Uh, in fact, in 1920, it was United States Representative and World War I veteran Hamilton Fish Jr. who introduced the House Joint Resolution uh, that sought to intern one unknown soldier from World War I at Arlington in a special tomb because later Congressman Fish had been a officer in the service. Um, he was in the 369th Infantry Regiment, now remembered as the Harlem Hellfighters, uh, where he earned a Silver Star and a French War Cross. And he observed that the French and the British had ceremoniously interred unknown soldiers. And he was determined as a member of Congress to make sure that the United States would do the same. And so during a hearing on the House Committee on Military Affairs in 1921, the general of the army at the time, John Pershing, testified that we had no national expression of any sort since the war ended that would give the people an opportunity to show their appreciation of the services over there, of the young manhood of the nation. And it seems a very fine thing for Congress to make some provisions for a ceremony that would give the people of the country an opportunity to do that. That measure passed in 1921, which is why we're having the 100th anniversary. And the spirit, as Gavin has so well pointed out, lived on because it wasn't just one unknown soldier. It was again an unknown soldier from World War II, an unknown soldier from Korea, and an unknown soldier from Vietnam, who later was identified because of the new DNA, but we still hold a place in the tomb of the unknown soldier for the people who served in the Vietnam War. When the first unknown soldier lay in state, he was only the 11th person to lay in state in the Capitol Rotunda. And there was a public visitation on November 10th of that year, 90,000 visitors came to pay their respects. Congress being Congress, even though he'd laid in state and the authorization was there, it took until 1931 for the full tomb uh, you know, facility to be built because they had to 
do what Congress does, not only authorize, but appropriate the money. Um, but it was complete. And we really are very excited to work with the Tomb Guard Society because this is a moment where we can come together as a country and thank people for their service and thank the families whose you know, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, wives and husbands have served in the military. And we now have a time where such a small percentage of the American people serve in the military that all of us owe a debt to the people who are willing to serve. And it is a moment to say, as we remember the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, that we are grateful for the people who are willing to serve in the military. And Gavin has outlined so many opportunities. And what we hope is that those of you who are listening, who are in congressional offices, can work with your member of Congress and your local veterans organizations, Gold Star families, whatever it is, to say, let's take a moment to do something local, a garden, a resolution, a ceremony, where we acknowledge and thank people for their service. So we're, we're happy to help if anyone wants to know sort of some of the history. We've got some, Gavin's got some. Uh, we are partnered up in this uh, every, every which way. So we, we do have a tradition on these webinars to uh, answer questions from those of you who are on the, um, on the line. So you can put your questions either in the Q&A or in the chat. Uh, I can find both of them. Uh, so I want, one of the things I think people should know, Gavin, is that you are doing this as a volunteer. You have a day job. So why don't you tell people what's your day job? <laughs> well, thank you, Jane, and, and I, I truly appreciate everything that you've said and, and, and the support that you provide, especially um, there in the D.C. region. Um, yes, it's uh, a, a labor of love as a tomb, former tomb guard. Um, <clears throat> my normal day job is as a state trooper with the Oregon State Police. I know that I don't look at that way right now. I'm recovering from a little back surgery, um, so I get some extra time to spend uh, working on the centennial. But yeah, in between my normal uh, day job working as a state trooper, I, I, I take this on and I have met so many unique people across the United States that in their own individual communities are doing something. Um, it, it's truly a blessing to be able to do that. So I served 23 years in the military, um, retired as a sergeant major. The, my tour of duty at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was from 1997 through 1998. Um, and that was during the time that the Vietnam unknown soldier was disinterred. Um, so that's a very brief background to, uh, on me. Well, we appreciate that, Gavin. One of the questions, and I, I'll tell you here, you'll love this. So we were working on putting this together. We've been back and forth on dates. And at one point we get this message, Gavin won't be available because he's involved with the murder trial. <laughs> Where went, what? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, remember he's a state trooper. <laughs> he's testifying. Right. <laughs> you kind of, you know, you know, you always have like three, four things going on, and you go, wait a minute, he's doing uh, what? Do. Um, so we really appreciate your work. One of uh, the things one of our crack staffers has determined is that the link in the um, uh, in the form is for the legislative test text from the 116th Congress, the last Congress. Okay. Um, and so we need to round up the link for this particular Congress that it has it had, do you know, has it been reintroduced yet? Or is it yet? That I don't know. Um, I, it, it had come out of um, trying to remember off the top of my head, I believe it was Senator Cotton's office. I was going to say Senator Cotton West, did it last Westland, year. Ben Westland. Um, were the two that, that introduced it in both sides of Congress. So I don't, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I apologize. I wish I had that 
you know what, we'll, we'll get the answer to that and we'll send it to all the people who are on uh, this. Um, we've also been working with Archer um, in the uh, Veterans Committee. So we, we, have, we have your names uh, because you <laughs> registered. So we will include in the follow-up uh, note the information about that. But thank you very much, Heather, for asking that question. Uh, it's a very important question, and we don't know the answer, but we can figure it out. Uh, does anybody have any other questions as we move? Um, we may want to give people a piece of their day back. Um, Gavin, do you have any you know, closing words that you'd like to share with people? Certainly. Thank you, Jane. Uh, you know, I provided a lot of information and the slides are, uh, will be made available. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure that um, Jane has those as well that can be sent out to everybody. Um, but the biggest thing that I'm, we're trying to do is involve that community, which is America. This isn't just the, you know, the mother of all wreath ceremonies planned for one day. This is an opportunity for us in our individual communities to come together and provide a little unity and inclusion and remember that there are so many different people in our nation that have stepped forward and set aside their personal liberties to don the uniform of our nation and, and go forward to protect others. And this is a simple way to honor and remember them, whether it's creating a safe environment and a beautiful garden in your, your house or within a community, or even like you said at the White House and, and remembering that service and sacrifice um, all the way down to just, um, you know, being Americans and, and being proud of that simple fact. So anything that I can do to assist you or any questions that you might have, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will find a way to juggle them all and get the answers back to you. Great. Well, thank you. And I just want to say one thing more about the, uh, when you speak about inclusion, um, I want to return again to the words from Hamilton Fish when he introduced the legislation. Think about this, is 1920. And he said at that time, the legislation that he introduced, that we would bring home the body of an unknown American warrior who in himself represents no section, creed, or race in the late war, and who typifies moreover the soul of America and the supreme sacrifice of her heroic dead. And the fact that in 1920, he wrote those words that we would come together across races, across creeds, um, is really an ideal to, to stand up to. And we thank you, Gavin, for bringing this issue to uh, the attention of of everyone. Um, someone asked one final question. The garden stone that you showed, is that something that people can purchase? Um, yes. Um, so we, we had contacted a, um, a garden marker company called Carew Studio, and I believe they're out of Ohio, and they handcrafted this marker, and it has some very specific text on it. Um, that talks about a lot of what is written in the Constitution and, and well as what the meaning of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is. It is available for purchase um, by simply going to our website, which is www.tombguard.org. And that is something that uh, communities have taken and, and, and placed. I have one outside of my home to remember the fallen that, that impacted my life and my wife's uh, life during our service to the nation. Um, so yes, it is, it is available today. Great, great. And we will, um, we will have all the information in the follow-up uh, follow notes. So we'll have the, the slides and, and so that people can follow. You don't have to be desperately writing all these things down or taking a screenshot. Right. Uh, thank, thank you, Gavin. Thank you for your work. Uh, thank you all for being on. We appreciate, as always, we always say, the United States Capitol Historical Society operates only because of the support of its members uh, and supporters. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your participation. Uh, we look forward to being with you again soon. I wanna give you a little shout out news, news flash. 
um, which is that on the 24th of August, as we celebrate uh, the anniversary of women earning the right to vote uh, on August 26, we stay with our Tuesday's lunch bite. We're going to have Ambassador Connie Morella talk about her journey as a very much of a pioneer on women in politics. So plan now for Tuesday, the 24th of August. It's bound to be hot. Surely you'd like to be inside on that day. Um, so we hope you'll join us and someone has given us the information that you are absolutely right. Carew's studio is in Waterville, Ohio, outside of Toledo, and they have beautiful garden art. So as a Buckeye, I am telling you, you made a good choice to pick Ohio. Thank All you, right. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Take care and have a good right. day. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.